users, welcome back to another video where we're going to be learning about files. Files come in all types and sizes. Can you think of some that you might already be familiar with? One example would be an image file. These come in formats like PNG, JPEG, or TIFF. The higher the resolution of the photo, the larger the file size. On the other hand, some files have very small file sizes, like an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document. Why do you think that might be? If we think about it, what exactly are files? Why do we use them? Well, they store data for us. A photo taken on an iPhone 11 is going to have a much larger file size than a photo taken on like an iPhone 5 because the camera on the iPhone 11 has a much higher resolution. And what does that translate to? Data. All that detail, the colors, the depths, the lighting to a computer, it's all just data, baby. As programmers, it's important that we feel comfortable working with files because they're still one of the primary methods for storing data. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to access, read from, and write to text files using the FStream library in C++. Learning to work with files also lays us a really great framework for upcoming concepts like arrays and pointers. All right, are you guys ready to file this knowledge away in your brain? Let's go. Working with files can be a little intimidating, but I'm going to show you that if you just think of files as a form of input and output, it's actually pretty simple. Before we dive into that, though, let's first reflect on the hundreds of times that we've already worked with input and output. So far, we've been using CIN and COUT for our input and our output. CIN to print to the console, and CIN to collect that input from the console. When we work with text files in our program, it's going to be very similar to that. Writing to our file is going to be our output, and reading from our file is going to be our input. Just instead of using the console, we're going to use a file. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have two columns that represent our two input and output libraries. We've got iostream for our console and fstream for our files. We've been working with the iostream library for a little while now. It allows us to use the cn and cout commands for our input and output. In our new library, the fstream library, f stands for file, so it is our file stream library. And it's going to handle the input and the output too, but using files instead of our console. So because of that, the terminology that we're going to use throughout is a little bit different. With iostream, we have input output, but with files, we have read and write. When you read data from a file and into your program, it's considered a form of input. You're just getting the data from a file instead of the console. Writing to a file is going to be a form of output, but again, the console is just replaced by a file. Sounds simple enough, right? So where's the difference? Let's go through it. With iostream, if you want to output a value, let's say the value of num to the console, we would do it like this. And that works because it tells our compiler where to send our output for num, and in this case, to the console. With files, we're going to tell the compiler to send the output to our file instead of the console. But as we discussed earlier, there's all kinds of different files that can be stored in all the directories on your computer. So before we put our output to a file, we need to do a little bit of prep work and specify to the compiler which file we're going to output to. Now, to do this, we need to create a file object. And this is where the term object-oriented programming comes in. The technical definition of object-oriented programming is <clears throat> an abstract data type with the addition of polymorphism and inheritance. Don't worry too much about the last part of that definition right now. Just focus on that abstract data type part, because much like a variable, our file object is going to need a data type. So, so far we've used data types which can be initialized to a single value, but a file on the other hand, well, that could hold a lot of values, right? Like, 
Think about the last report that you had to write for school. That was probably a lot of information in one place. Can you imagine having to store each one of those words in a unique string variable? Like, that would be crazy. We would need so many. So instead of that, we're going to use a file object to point our program directly to our file with all that information. Now, the data type that we use for our file object is going to determine if we are reading data from the file or writing data to it. The first file data type is going to be if stream, and that's used to identify input file objects. a file object that we want to read and get our input from. Okay, I for input, I for if stream. Our other file object is the data type of stream, and this is going to allow for us to have output to our file object. So, in this case, it's going to be O for of stream, O for output. It's a nice easy way to remember it. Right now, we want to write the value of num to our file. Since we're going to be writing to it, meaning it's an output, we need to start by declaring an of stream file object. And we're going to do it just like we would a variable. So first we need our data type. So there's our of stream. Next, we need to give our declaration a name so that we can call it in our program. So for this one, let's just call it write file. since we're writing to it. Now, with a regular variable, we would either stop our declaration here or initialize the variable with a value. With file objects, we don't initialize them per se. Instead, we give them a parameter. A parameter is a piece of information that gets passed to a function to be used within the scope of that function. Because of our parentheses here, we know that this declaration is going to be a function so we can pass a parameter to it. A function is a pre-written code that exists outside of our main int function, but we can call it and run it whenever we'd like. So we've had exposure to functions before, like we're using int main right here, and we know that that's a function because of the parentheses, but we've also used functions as part of libraries, like the iomanip library that we use set width. Remember when we use that to make our receipt output nice and sharp and professional? In int main, we don't need a parameter, but with set width, we did, and that was the number of characters that we wanted our output to display in its width. That's because functions sometimes require a parameter to execute their code. I'm not going to get too deep into this right now, but I do want to point it out because we're going to be getting into functions soon, and it's a good primer for it, and it's good to have this exposure. But back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Couldn't resist. The parameter we wanted to give our file object is going to be the literal file name that we want this object to reference. Since we're going to be writing numbers to this file, let's just call it numbers. Now it's very important to specify that this is a text file by including this .txt extension and to enclose it in quotation marks. And that's because the name of our file is a string. Remember, strings always get double quotes. Now, a fun fact about of stream file objects is that when this slide of code executes, if numbers.txt does not already exist in your project's file directory, it will create the file for you, which is super cool. And again, that's another reason it's so important to specify what type of file to create. Keep watching to the end of this video, and I'll show you where on your computer this file is actually being created. But OK, now that we've got our file object declared, named, and given a parameter, we can begin to use it in our code. To write the value of num to our file as an output, we're going to do it just like cout, but instead of our console command, we're just going to replace it with our file object, so just like this. And then our output carrots. If we ran the console version of our program over here, it's going to display the value of 5 to our console. 
If we run our file version of the program, and then we went and opened up numbers.txt, we would see nums value of 5 in the text file. Now, let's say that we wanted to turn around and read that value off the file and use it to initialize a different variable, say num2. If you've ever tried to do something on your computer using a file that's currently open, sometimes you'll get an error along the lines of file is currently in use or access denied. Well, our program that we've got right here is no different because right now, technically, this file is open and being tied up in our program. So what that means is when we're done working with our file object, we need to make sure to close it so that we can reopen it as our read file. To do that, we're going to use another file function called close. It's nice and easy to remember. So we're just going to write the name of our file object that we want to close. In this case, write file. And then a period. And then close. And again, because of the function, we're going to put on those parentheses. No parameter for this one. So the period tells our compiler that this close function applies to this file object here. When this line of code executes, our file is going to close and our write file object will no longer be accessible. After that happens, it's now freed up to reopen as an input file. So that's one that we read from. Pop quiz, what object type are we going to need to declare this as? An if stream file object, I for input, right? Let's call this one read file. And again, when we're declaring our file object, we need to tell our compiler what to reference. And so we want our numbers file. Numbers.txt. Okay. Now, if we were just using our console to get the value for num2, we would just use a cn command, right? But since we're using a file, what do we need to do? We replace the cn with our file object. But the syntax remains the same. So in this case, In order to test this and see if it works, what if we display the total of the two numbers? We know that num has a value of 5, and if we're able to successfully read num2 off of our text file, then it should also be 5, and that would give us a total of 10. What? What are you looking at? Oh, this? Oh, yeah. I put math in the cout statement. It's legit. You can totally do that. Rather than making a whole new variable called total, we can just calculate it in line. Isn't that cool? All right. But obviously, we can't run this here on the whiteboard. So let's go ahead and go check it out on the computer. OK, so here we are on the computer. And this is just everything that we had on the lightboard. So we've got our declaration. We're opening up our write file, writing the value of dumb to it, which should be 5. We close that out. Right, so that we can reopen it now as a read file. And we're going to read that value into num2, add them together, and print that out. So we should be seeing 10. Let's go ahead and check our work. Run this baby. All right, there we go. Perfect, 10. So we were able to successfully write the value of num to our file, read it back in, and add those together. Yes, I love it. OK, so what else can we do with files? We talked earlier about how we might handle a file with multiple values, like say for example a file that had, I don't know, a bunch of clients and their previous sales total on it, maybe like this one. You see how I just opened that file? <laughs> Looking at this, we have three rows and four columns. We've got some names and some numbers or in proper terminology some strings and ints. Now that we're at the computer, let's say that we write a fresh program and play around a little bit. Why don't we write a program that's going to total each of these clients' spending 
and display it to the console. All right, everyone, I hope this was super helpful and made you feel a lot more comfortable and empowered in your ability to work with text files. If you get stuck, just remember how similar it is to working with our console. If you can do that, you can totally do this. Also, I have one final exercise for you for when you're feeling overwhelmed by all of this. So it's very simple. You just need to sit down in your chair, relax all those muscles. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our muscles right here at the corner of our mouth and just pull them towards our ears, okay? So here we go. There, get a nice big stretch. There we go. And you should be feeling much better. Again, I'm so proud of you for watching these and building yourself up. Don't ever close out on that inner programmer.